Hey, fourth grade, I'm missing you guys. I'm sorry your lecture's a little late. Um, for some reason, it's taken me three tries to get through this IW4 lecture. Um, hopefully, this will be the one and I can get it sent to you. Fortunately, you guys aren't really doing anything new um, this week, so you may have already knocked it out, but I'm going to send a letter, I mean a lecture just in case. And then on Sunday, I will film your lecture for next week and make sure you have it by Tuesday. So, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about how this is going to look. I hope that we're going to be able to um, meet again, but I'm really not sure. And if not, I'm going to miss you guys. And I hope you're all signing up for IW5 because I'd sure love to have you again. Um, there are going to be some things that we can't do, like read our stories and do a Mad Libs, and I'm going to miss that. But I do have some creative ways for you to share your stories, um, just so you're getting that practice and because you're blessing other people with your writing. So one idea is to um, gather your family together. It's probably not that hard this week, and um, read your story to your entire family. Um, also, you can call your grandma, your grandpa, and read your stories to them. I, they may be trying to isolate fully right now, and so it'll be good to hear from you and hear some of your work. Um, practice social distancing. See if you can shout your um, story six feet. You can also, if you have friends in the class, and I know that some of you do, and um, their mom's text, you can probably FaceTime one another and read your stories. Um, also, you can upload it to social media. There's a lot of new homeschool families, the entire nation is homeschooling right now and so you guys are trendsetters and if you can um, show them that we've got this and that they can do it too then it might calm some nerves so if you upload it to social media just be sure to tag me in it um, one thing that I can keep the same is our creative title contest as long as you guys email me your stories by Monday my kids are gonna vote and they have voted for Savage Spider by Owen Reinhardt so you guys can do your victory dance, or Owen, you can do your victory dance. So I'm going to read two stories today, and I'll probably try to read about two a week, and I'll try to remember who I've read. Um, Savage Spider by Owen Reinhardt. Although huntsman spiders appear intimidating, they are not deadly. The huntsman spider advances extremely quickly. They have long, hairy legs. Because of their size and speed, they intimidate people. Although their bite can cause swelling, it is not fatal. Occasionally, these crafty spiders will come into houses. Huntsman spiders, which can be up to 15 centimeters long, appear intimidating, but they are not mortiferous. And Owen, oh, you did such a good job on your quality adjective. I had not heard that word, but I can look at the root word mort, and it reminds me of mortician, which means dead. So I'm going to assume that that's a good quality adjective that means deadly. So very nice job with that. You also did a good job with your topic sentence and your conclusion sentence mirroring it and your five details in between. So good job with that. Now I'm going to um, hear from Mr. Darian. Although huntsman spiders intimidate, they are not really deadly. These spiders hastily move to live. If the spider chows down on you, you usually start to swell. Surprisingly, they shock people who are not from Australia. Because they lay up to 200 eggs, they do not eat until the eggs hatch. Okay, so make sure you get that conclusion sentence that mirrors the topic sentence. Otherwise, this looks great. We'll review that um, in the lecture. So everybody will have that nailed down. So, um, moving right along, we're going to move into your new story. And the first thing you do is what? Use Chloe's to-do list over here. Alright, so the first thing we do is write a topic sentence, right? Wrong! The first thing we do is read our story in its entirety, which means all of it, so that we can formulate a good topic sentence. So, today's story is on petroleum fries, flies. We're doing um, petroleum flies. Please don't eat petroleum fries. That would be gross. Um, petroleum flies. This is the newbie story. Remember, newbies are doing interesting insects. And our oldies are doing koalas, which is one of my favorite stories. And you guys are on your own, but watch the lecture to make sure we hit um, a good review. Petro the petroleum fly of California lives where most animals can't, in pools of black oil bubbling up from the earth. 
other insects get caught in these pools and drown, but not petroleum flies. The females lay their eggs right on top of the surface of these oily pools. When the larvae hatch, they feed on other insects which get trapped in the oil. But the larvae don't stay on the oil pools forever. They burrow into the soil at the edge of the pools, slowly changing into adults and then crawl out of the soil to mate. Females return to the black pools of oil to lay their eggs. So now we need to come up with a good topic sentence. And I'm going to say petroleum flies have an interesting life cycle. Petroleum flies have an interesting life cycle. So now you're going to go through with your highlighter and you're going to highlight only the things that support that petroleum flies have an interesting life cycle. And you guys are pros at this, you should be fine. And then remember you're going to list five examples of how they have a unique life cycle and then you're going to fact check. You're going to say, oh, does this prove? Yes. Does this prove? Yes. Does this prove? No. Maybe you need to look at another one. Um, so just make sure that you have five. Now I want everybody to watch this. This is a good time for even mamas to watch because this is the one thing that we're kind of um, a little sketchy on in IW4. Your conclusion sentence, that seventh sentence, needs to mirror this topic sentence. So you're going to circle keywords, three keywords, and write those down in your outline. So we'll do, we'll do PF, that's an abbreviation for petroleum flies, so that doesn't count as one of our words. So petroleum flies, interesting life cycle. And you don't want to say it the exact same way in the conclusion that you said in the topic sentence. So think of some different ways that you um, can change it. You can change the sentence structure with an opener. It's a great time to use your thesaurus. What I would do is look up this interesting and find another quality adjective, something like fascinating. But use your thesaurus because it will make your word much more interesting. So you could say, truly, the lifestyle of the petroleum fly is interesting. And then you have your LY opener and your quality adjective. And you have a great conclusion sentence. And you've killed three birds with the same stone. So um, you'd be good to go on that. You guys should be ready for that. Remember, you're going to do um, koalas if you're an oldie. So let's review what's going into each of these um, papers. Because when you start with your dress ups, if you forget one or two, it's not very expensive in your points. So you guys are used to making 98s, 96s. But as we expand the number of things for which we're asking, um, when you start losing points for these things, they really start to add up. So you're going to do a what, Emory? A dress up checklist. That's right. So we'll make sure we do a who, which, a www.asia, a because, an ly, a strong verb, and a quality adjective. And I know that you know what all those are. So make sure you get them all in and check them off in your dress up checklist. And then, you're, this week you're responsible for three openers. And that's the three, the five, and the six. The six might be new to you guys. You've got the three, that's your LY opener. We've talked about an example. Truly, petroleum flies have a fascinating lifestyle. I know that you guys know what a five is. It's your um, Asia or because opener. So um, you start a sentence with because or when, while, where, as, since, if, although. Um, your six is a very short sentence and it's not tricky. It's just what it says it is, a very short sentence. And they don't have to be super um, scientific. You can say, that's amazing, or these babies are being born on a pool of oil. You can say, that's gross. 
And what a very short sentence says is it just grabs the reader's attention. We're kind of getting bogged down in this nonfiction now, and we're hearing the same stories kind of rewritten over and over. And that very short sentence just brings your reader back. I can actually see them work in class. When when people get to their very short sentence, everybody kind of re-engages. So um, I've been teaching this for four years, and I can see them at work. So make sure you get the um, very short sentence in. Add your creative title, and then what we're going to do now is have you email your final copy to me. So, um, I'll have your work. You don't have to send a rough draft. You don't have to send your outline. I love these things because they help me see if you get off track, but it helps me see where. But it's just not feasible right now. So, just send me your final copy and I'll get a grade and some feedback to you and that'll be enough. So, I'm going to email this link to you and then you're going to email your papers back to me. Remember, we're going to keep our creative um, title contest the same. Um, and try to make this as interesting and as fun as we can. We do the best we can. And today, the weather is so gorgeous. If you can safely get outside into your backyards, um, do it. Take advantage of this beautiful day that God's given us. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.